We are writing the year 1991. Dark Monks just released Metal Method Speed Kills with none other than Michael Angelo Badio. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I was one year old and I was blown away by his incredible speed picking, his sweeping and of course the over the fretboard kind of playing. So in the song Speed Kills there are tons of licks but there's especially one lick that I want to point out today which really helps you to improve your left hand speed, improve your right hand speed, improve your awareness about pick slanting and gives you a cool pattern how you can outline Apecios. So I would say it's time to take a deeper look into it. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so now the main pattern goes like this. And what we have here is a C major 7 chord, where I start with the 5th, going to the major 3rd, to the C, the root, and to the major 7, and back again. Now basically what Michael is doing here, he is shifting it from C major to E flat major, D major, and B flat major. Now, why is this such a good exercise for you? Okay, first off, the left hand. Well, the thing on the left hand is that we are using the same fingerings, the same three fingerings in a short amount of time. We have to change, for example, really quickly with the index finger from the E to the B string. There's, for example, one exercise where you can make this one a little bit more difficult for your left hand, though it's not so good in a musical way, by using just the same two pairs of fingerings, like, for example, middle finger and index finger. Or a ring finger and index. Or a pinky and index. Sorry. The less amounts of fingers that we have to use in our sequence, the harder it is for our left hand because we have to repeat a certain fingering in a smaller interval, even a lot often, a lot quicker. And this is the reason why sometimes these kind of leaks a little bit harder than the usual three note per string sequencing kind of links because certain individual fingers on our left hand has a little bit more time to relax playing those three note per string sequences. All right, now let's check out what Michael is doing with the right hand. The amount of notes that we have per string is in this case really, really important. We're starting off with two on the E string and then we have an uneven number of notes per string on the uh, B string. Three notes, one, two, one, two, three. This means that we are starting with downward pick slanting and then we have to change on these uneven number of notes kind of strings on the B string to upward pick slanting. And then we have again three notes on the E string, again, again an uneven number of notes per string, that means we have to change back to downward pick slanting. Alright, again, down, up, down, up, down, up. I change the pick slant direction mostly of the last note of the string with a so-called snap movement that we can perfectly learn with the Paul Gilbert. Alright, so again we have a really cool interesting mixture out of two-way pick slanting starting with downward and then switching between upward and downward. But this is only on the two-string version. Later, Michael is expanding this lick to four strings by playing the octaves below. Here our pick slant is a little bit different. Here now we have a little bit more time to focus on one certain pick slant direction. Because up to the point where we have an uneven number of notes on a string, in this case the D string, that we can stay with one pick slant direction and in this case downward pick slant direction. 
All right, so we have downward, up, down, down, up, down, up. If you want to learn more about pick slanting and speed picking in general, then check out the Then of Speed Picking, my online masterclass about speed picking with more than 50 exercises and detailed explanation for two-way pick slanting, string skipping, how to get up to tempo and all this kind of stuff. Or watch the ultimate guide for speed picking, my one hour long video about speed picking. Check the information card for more. Okay, another tricky thing is the shift between the octaves because our index has to jump between three frets in the time span of one note. So when we have reached the pinky here on the G string for example, we have to go with our index to the 12th fret on the B string. And then, and now we're coming to a section which is always really important for me. How do we practice those kind of licks? And this kind of problem here, I would practice up to tempo, but focusing on that jump. Like this. And then adding more and more notes to that sequence. And so on. And another thing that is always really important for me is the focus on what I'm practicing here. So always try to get an awareness. Is really every note pick or picked or do I have a pull off or a hammer on here and there? Am I maybe a little bit too slow with my left hand or too slow with my right hand? Then for example only practice the right hand like this for example. It's much harder than it looks. If you are new to this channel, there are a lot of videos about practicing in my practice routine. So yeah, feel free to look around a little bit and to see some more videos about my practice habits. All right, and that's basically it with today's lick. Let's summarize a little bit. With this lick, we can work on two-way pick slanting in shorter amount of time, like the beginning section of the lick. or with a longer sequence so it can stay on one pick's length direction for a longer amount of time. And due to the two note per string sequence, we can also practice our left hand. And then of course we have a cool pattern to outline chords, major chords in this particular. If we want to have this one as a dominant chord, for example, just shift the major seven to a dominant seven. Also really interesting for our left hand. If we want to have it minor, then shift also the major third to a minor third. And with that you can outline cool kind of arpeggios inside of a scale. Like for example C minor, going to E flat major, going to F dominant 7. Really, really cool kind of shape and fingering here. So if you like this little lick lesson, then leave a like, leave a comment and a subscribe. And I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. Cheers so far and stay progress. Bye.